Hello there and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. To start things off today, we're going to do things a little bit different. We're going to start with a test. Take five seconds and try to identify these six different faces. Was this more challenging than you originally thought it would be? What if I put these faces up right? Does that make it easier for you? What you just experienced is known as the face inversion effect. You're able to quickly identify faces upright because your perceptual system is designed to notice upright faces. So as you can see in today's video, we are going to be reviewing unit three, topic two of AP Psychology, Principles of Perception. Remember from our last video, sensation is raw data. It's information that comes from our five senses. The source is sensory organs. While perception is the process of interpreting the information that we obtain through our five senses. Let's go back to how we process faces and look at these two photos. What do you notice? What you are looking at right now is that Thatcher's illusion. This is when we as individuals struggle to identify changes made to a face when looking at it upside down. If we flip these photos upside right, we can clearly see and quickly see the problems with these photos. Our brains are constantly trying to identify faces in the world around us, and they're really good at quickly finding them. This is the part of the reason why it's common for people to see faces in everyday objects. This phenomenon is known as pareidolia. Now, some people cannot recognize faces. This often stems from a neurocognitive disorder known as prosopagnosia also known as face blindness, which is caused by genetics or brain injury. When trying to understand how an object retains its shape, its size, its color, we have to understand a couple different constancies. Our brains are always making these adjustments, even when we don't realize it. First, we have perceptual constancy, which allows us to understand depth, location, and process information. There's also size constancy, which is the brain's ability to perceive objects as the same size. Color constancy is the perception of color of an object remaining the same, even if the lighting changes. Next is shape constancy. This is when we view objects that are moving, for example, a door opening, but we still perceive the object to have the same shape. Lastly, we have lightness constancy. This is our perception of the blackness, whiteness, and grayness of an object. To illustrate some of these points, take five seconds and look at the image on the screen, and let me know in the comment section down below what you notice. Now, when you were looking at the image, what color did you think the strawberries were? If you said red, you're actually wrong. There are no red pixels in this photo. If you saw red, you're experiencing color constancy. It's a perceptual constancy. Your brain is essentially auto-correcting the image based on your previous experiences. Now, that's just part of the reason. Your brain is also using the colors surrounding the object to base its inferences on. You're also utilizing some top-down processing here. Movies, illusionists, and theme parks take advantage of our senses and perceptions all the time to create amazing effects that boggle our minds. Take, for example, the movie Elf. One of the ways in which Will Ferrell appears to be so large is by utilizing forced perspective. You can see that in this shot, Will Ferrell appears to be sitting on the lap of Papa Elf. In reality, those are the legs of a child, and the actor who plays Buddy's dad is sitting in another chair in the back of the room. Forced perspective tricks our brains to make us think that objects are closer, farther away, larger, or smaller than what they actually are. Now, in processing information, we use what is known as a perceptual set. This is the tendency to perceive certain aspects of an object, scenario, and ignore other aspects of the same stimuli. Perceptual sets influence top-down processing. Remember from the last video, top-down processing is when we use prior knowledge when interpreting the information presented to us. This can occur because of our expectations, experiences, culture, motivation, and our emotions. For example, look at this picture and tell me where the bird is. You probably can see it right away in the sky, but if I told you tell me where the bunny on the skis is, now that bird doesn't look like a bird, and instead looks like a very athletic bunny flying through the sky. Now that your expectations have changed, your perception may have changed. You're using top-down processing, and your perceptual sets are influencing your perception. What about this image? What do you see? Do you see a 13 or the letter B? If you work with numbers all day, you're more likely to see 13. If you spend more time reading and writing, well, you're more likely to see the letter B. Well, you can also see your experiences and culture impact how you perceive an image. But what if we change the context of the image? Do you still see what you originally saw? Do you see the 13 or do you see the letter B? What about now? Or now, notice how I'm not changing the image, I'm changing what's around the original image. This is influencing your processing. All right, take a look at this picture. Can you see which line is the longest, shortest, or is this just another trick and the lines are actually all the same size? This is known as the Muller liar illusion. And as you can see, the lines are actually the same size, but our minds have a hard time processing that. The cues that we are interpreting cause us to see them as different sizes. All right, how about this image? Are these lines the same size or am I just trying to trick you again? If you need more time, pause the video. Here again, we can 
see, the answer is yes, they're the same size. Depending on where in the world you grew up and where you live, you might have a different perception of this image. People who grew up in urban areas or countries that typically have square buildings with lots of right angles, which don't occur that often in nature, may struggle with it. But people in areas of less urbanization and more round buildings with less right angles might not easily fall for this illusion. That's because their cultural perceptual set is not influencing their perception. Your perceptual set is also why when you are angry or really happy, you'll perceive situations and individuals differently. Your motivations and emotions are impacting what you are perceiving. Now, since we are talking about perception, we also have to talk about our schemas. This is a cognitive framework. It's how we organize and understand the world around us. Schemas are based on our experiences and help guide our perceptual set. We start creating schemas at birth, and you have schemas for a variety of different situations and experiences. Think of them as a mental shortcut. For example, when you go to work, you know what you are supposed to do. You know what a good job is and what a bad job is. You know what's expected of you. Or let's say one day you have a child and they ask you what is going to happen at the family birthday party. You'd probably be able to answer them by saying there'll be lots of food, music, games, and presents. You don't know exactly what will happen, but you can use the information from parties in the past to give a reasonable answer. This is a schema. We'll talk more about schemas when we go into unit six and look at development. One last concept I want to address is how our awareness impacts our perception. When watching this clip, tell me how many passes the team in white makes. Did you get it? The answer is 13, but more importantly, did you notice anything weird during the video? Perhaps a moonwalking bear? Or could you tell me how many times the players in black pass the ball? Your attention is limited, and when you focus on specific stimuli, you're utilizing selective attention. If you completely miss the bear, you experience change blindness, which is the failure to detect a change that is made to a visual stimuli. If you actually think about it for a little bit, it's pretty crazy to think about how many things we're perceiving are being influenced, and how our culture and our motivations and our attention and our awareness and all all these different things can impact how we perceive the world. But enough of that for right now. Now comes the time for you to practice what we've learned. Take a couple of minutes and answer the questions on the screen and check your answers in the comment section below. Also, if you need more help with AP Psychology, don't forget to check out my ultimate review packet. It's a great resource that covers all the units of AP Psychology and it'll help you get an A in your class and a five on that national exam. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time online.